We work with partners who can offer women opportunities to upskill, pivot in their careers and create amazing opportunities. That is why our partnership with UQ Business School is so well aligned for us at Business Chicks. I always think it's important to carry on investing in yourself and your own professional development. It's going to help you with your career, give you extra tools for your toolkit, help you to be your best self. And it doesn't have to be hard. It could be reading a book, listening to a podcast, or even doing formal education where you can spend an intensive time studying a subject. To hear from real women who are in the same situation as me, juggling career and family, and also managing to incorporate such a flexible program to excel themselves in their career, it was quite inspiring. And it certainly changed my perception to explore that as a, an opportunity for myself. could have my Hello everyone and welcome to another brilliant masterclass online. My name is Maggie and I am, oh gosh, I'm sorry, I'm having a little tech difficulties here. I am, uh, I'm on the events team here at Business Chicks and um, I'm going to try and stop sharing my screen now, I'm sorry. There we go, got that fixed now. Um, so uh, it's such a pleasure having you here today. Thank you so much for joining us. And sorry for that little uh, tech difficulty there. Um, if you're a First Nations person here today, I acknowledge you and all of the traditional owners of country and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, before we get into the content, I just wanna start by giving, uh, hoping that you'll give yourself a pat on the back for taking the time today uh, to invest time into yourself and your learning and development. I know it's not always easy and we all have such busy lives, so well done for showing up today. Uh, today's masterclass online wouldn't be possible without the support of our friends at the University of Queensland Business School. Uh, at the University of Queensland Business School, they believe women can change the world and that's why they're so excited to partner with Business Cheeks and we're just as excited to partner with them. Together, our goal is to support more women like you into senior leadership positions or your very own business. If you're ready to take the next step in your career, check out our professional development short courses and industry relevant postgraduate programs that will help you get there at www.business.uq.edu.au forward slash business chicks. And you can see that on the screen there and we'll also share the link in the follow-up email as well. All right, let's get into it. It is my pleasure to introduce today's presenter, Dr. Vivian Pontus, a marketing lecturer at the University of Queensland Business School. Previously a marketing manager at a global market research firm, Vivian has worked with clients in a range of industries, including financial services, education, marketing, and communications. She's a passionate educator in the area of services and digital marketing and writes on a variety of topics involving consumer behavior, such as morality, sustainability and emotions with a focus on relationship and service marketing. You have a very, very long business card, I can imagine, Vivian. <laughs> it's nice to have you here today. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. I have to say I'm slightly nervous, <laughs> so bear with me. Um, thank you so much for your introduction, Maggie. Um, can I share my screen now? Absolutely, go for it. I'll let you share your screen and then I will jump off and I'll meet you at the end for questions. Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, thank you for having me. And for those of you who are, I hope you have snacks. Because they told me how they should, why they should give up their lunch for, and I was like, oh, maybe we should have lunch together. But I will be talking, and you can be eating. Uh, and I was invited to talk about marketing in a socially conscious world. Um, you'll see that in here it is. I'm trying not to be too academic-y, uh, and I also try that towards the end I have some maybe useful and simple tips so how we can connect uh, in a deeper level with your consumers. Because this is what this is about today but this is my agenda i was talking i'm going to talk about me i'll talk about emotions uh, value so that's when some little bits of the theory and maybe some frameworks might come in place and i'm hoping this is not too repetitive for you 
we will talk about this changing consumer and how they want and needs. They are so dynamic and they change all the time. But what we as a business can do uh, to deliver the consumers what they want and they need. And we are going to talk about some intangible things such as doing the right thing. Um, and then, as I mentioned, um, lastly, I will see if I can give you some ideas on terms of next steps. So about me, as Maggie mentioned, um, I started my career back in Brazil, as you might have noticed. Um, I worked in many different uh, industries. I started working when I was actually, I was actually 14 uh, at Benetton. And uh, after that, majority of my uh, professional experience was within the services industry. Uh, so I worked with banks, communication industries, energy, uh, and uh, the last places that I worked. Uh, on, they were education focused. So my career, uh, my academic career started in 2011 at Monash University, where I was a lecturer in uh, fundamentals of marketing and strategy. So that was a very fun experience. I moved to Brisbane and started my PhD here at KUT, which I finished in 2020. Um, I briefly went back to the industry working for RACQ, uh, so it's a big insur insurance company, now they have their own bank and they just bought an energy company. And um, it was a very happy um, moment in my life where I started my sustainability research within RACQ and I came back to the industry, uh, to academic academia because, um, well, I really love academic research, maybe let's put it that way. Uh, so today I work at the University of Queensland teaching a variety of courses. Mm. So this is about me professionally, but I want you to know me in a deeper level and I can guarantee that it has a meaning why I'm oversharing a little bit about myself. So this is me or how I, who I want to be in this world. So you see here I have at the very top, I have my friends at UQ and I have my mom's group. Uh, I have, uh, and here I said that I am a Australian because I am Brazilian by birth, but Australian by choice. I'm also an educator. Uh, so in here you have my, this is, these are all very recent pictures actually, uh, from the last day of the semester where my group, one of my groups, they have done an excellent presentation for a case study. You have in there my family. I'm also a volunteer. So this, uh, and lastly, but not less important, I'm a proud mama of two. So I can imagine that many of you relate with this multiple roles that we have in our lives and they influence who we are and who we want to be and how they perceive us, right? Um, I think all of these things I'm showing you, it reflects who is the ideal me, who I want to be and how I want to be perceived by my friends and hopefully, if they see me as a friendly person, as a positive person, as something that someone that's responsible and good in what I do and I'm trying to do the right thing, um, I, want, I, I think this is a reason for them to be wanting to be around me or not, maybe they don't like that. Uh, and I tend to say, because I'm a good Brazilian, that I'm like Poppy, who is aware of Poppy here, Poppy from Trolls. I love hugs. Some people don't like hugs too much, but I'm being able to convert some of my friends uh, and now they do hug anyways. Um, but how does that translate to business? So business not very different from people than our own identities. Um, we want to have an identity in which reflects what we do for our community, for our consumers. So they want to do business with us for longer. So they want to be in a relationship with us because we are good. So in this way, how what I'm talking about me is maybe how you should start perceiving your own business. What is your business identity in terms of everything that you do? Not only about your service, like you provide a good service or a good product, but what else, right? So I think this, when we talk later about the changing consumer, this is what they want to see as well. But before I go to the change in consumer and morality and emotions, I wanted to talk to you about value. So some of you might be familiar with this concept. Um, and um, 
some of you might not be familiar, so I, I will not try to go into a great extent here. We can talk about this later after the presentation if there's something that you don't understand. But this is one of, in my view, is one of the most fundamental uh, marketing frameworks, which is um, um, it depicts the process of companies creating value to their consumers uh, by first understanding what they want. So we create and we design a marketing strategy involving selecting the, the specific segments that can be our product or our service can be appealing to. We design the four Ps and we create a program in which we try to build a relationship with these consumers. If we do this very well, we will be able to capture value from these consumers. But in this case in here, let me explain better what value actually means. Value in here means your product or your service, your offering in a marketplace. So let's imagine here that you provide advice around fitness or you provide advice around buying, selling houses or you own your own hair salon. So this is basically the core of your services. But your value is actually what makes people choose your service and not a competitor? Because you can have many hair salons, you can have many rental agencies or many fitness uh, places, but why do they prefer to go with you and not the other one? So value also is what differentiates you from your, from your competitors. So a conscious brand or a brand that cares about things around them, and that could be the environment, the planet, other consumers, or the community, it should be a brand that's doing the right thing. And that might be become a point of difference. So that's why I'm trying to explain what value actually means to see this identity of your brand becoming something that's more evident, not only your core product, but all of the different layers that uh, entails your business and can uh, influence your consumer's preference and loyalty, right? So, but for doing that, we need to understand what the consumers they want. Uh, so this model becomes a little bit more relevant. In terms of what consumers understanding, what consumers want and need, and later on, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this, is that um, it is a very dynamic construct. What people wanted before COVID, for example, for hotels, they want a hotel that's cheap and it's convenient. Now they also want that place to be so clean because people are more aware of all the problems with hygiene and contamination and stuff so what they want and what they need the priorities they have changed after covid in so many different ways i'm just giving you one of the example but these ones and needs they constantly change and they're changing now even more with the many different events that we had in society in the past years um so once you understand these needs and wants and you're you keep monitoring those needs and ones and you are able to deliver the value it is more likely that you are going to be able to capture the value back from consumers when i talk about the value that we capture back in here it entails a range of behaviors that they actually go beyond the financial transactions it's not how much they pay for your service or your product but they are also highly beneficial for the company such as they uh, quickly prompted or they quickly um, um, spontaneously they generate positive word of mouth they can give you feedback if a product or a service is not working as they should so you can improve your product or your service and um, it creates it gives you an advantage uh, in comparison with your competitors if you have that sort of relationship with your consumers that they feel like they can do that for you they can also defend your brand if something goes wrong and uh, if you do everything well uh, it is more likely that delivering the superior value including doing what's right uh, in different layers and different spheres of your society um, it can lead to consumer preference and loyalty so just going back a little bit more uh, and further explaining this concept of value uh, for example, if you have a, if you own a hair salon uh, and thinking about the consumer point of view, uh, value for me, the offering entails not only the haircut, but 
If I had an easy booking or cancellation system that's normally done online or via phone, what's more convenient? Um, if the price matches the promise or if it's a transparent pricing strategy, uh, if you have the adequate products for my hair, because we all have different hairs and we know how much that can be uh, uh, influence the outcome of your hairstyle. Um, if the customer service is polite, if they're friendly, and also and you, when you get there, it is a clean environment, uh, all of the tangibles that we can see if it matches your expectations. But obviously, because um, co consumers, they evaluate all of those things to have an idea of your offering or what you are offering for them. If, if it, this is reasonable enough or meets your expectations, their expectations, so they come back. Um, so I'm not going to go into much detail in here, but value, it's all of that and a bit more. However, this is what you give and that you have total control over that. But value has many different meanings as well. So um, the problem that we are solving for our consumers, that could be a haircut, that could be renting or buying or selling a house, or that could be getting fit. The problem that we are solving becomes part of the value meaning, but we need to understand that this, this value has different meanings. For example, let's put in here, uh, and the song that we heard at the very beginning is very uh, appropriate because it talks about Louis Vuitton bag. So, and I didn't know that, but my example here brings the Louis Vuitton bags as well. Um, for example, buying a handbag. Uh, it doesn't matter the brand you buy a handbag. The core reason why you buy that is because you have to solve your problem, which is keeping your belongings safe and portable, right? So that's why you buy a bag, uh, one of those bags. If you buy a Kmart, it's likely that you can buy more than one because it's cheap uh, and you have a variety of uh, styles. Normally, they follow some fashion trends uh, and you have an equivalent quality according to the price you're paying for. So some people, they will prefer to have a variety of bags uh, and many bags and they buy from Kmart or any other shop that's a little bit less expensive. Um, but if you decide to buy a Louis Vuitton bag, the meanings of the value that I get from buying that bag, they're different. So I have a sense of a more exclusive product. Uh, it confers more status. Uh, I feel like that product is more unique and it tends to have a superior quality. It doesn't matter the reasons why we buy those products, but value has different meanings in depending on the different brands. And obviously those are also different target markets. Um, so I'm gonna come back to this example, but just to understand that value means different things for different people. For some people, a good price, a good bargain might be what they're looking for. For some people, it might be status and exclusivity. So value has different meanings and this is, um, one thing that it needs to be understood. And I will, I will come back to this example. Now we understand that what value means, let's discuss emotions. So this is another part. Everything is going to come together at some point, I guarantee. Uh, and I will bring you a more personal example. Uh, all the way from the late 90s in Brazil when I was working in a bank. So this is um, the Bank of Brazil. This is around two, late 90s. So this is how uh, 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 a queue to get the teller to do any business that you have with the bank, they looked like in Brazil. Probably they still look like that a little bit. Um, so you would probably stay two hours in a line just to do a simple transfer or deposit or withdrawal. You would stay two hours in there, easy. And then as um, uh, I was very excited when the news about the new ATA machines uh, and the range of services that will be available uh, that will make it possible for us as a bank to deliver a superior value to our customers uh, and will make us more efficient so that obviously it would generate more satisfaction. Um, so their customers, they could get their business done in maybe less than 15 minutes with the use of the ATM machines. Um, so my main job and our main job in our, in our group, in our team, it was to explain to those consumers what they could do in the self-service stations, uh, things like withdrawals, or they could make deposits and they could um, uh, do the transferences, pay bills, etc. a range of stuff, right? 
So um, I was one of the customer services specialists talking to hundreds of customers a day. And um, although some of them, they were actually thrilled because they would spend like 10, five minutes and they'll get their business done for the day and they could enjoy whatever else, family, uh, you know, having a drink, having a longer lunch, whatever. Uh, but to my absolute surprise, um, some of our customers, they were angry. So this is what we get. And it was not just one or two. We have maybe 30% of our customers, they were actually very angry. So different reasons for that. Uh, one of the main reasons was that without their consent, we removed their opportunity to connect. So for some of those customers, the chit chat with the teller, it was their only conversation in the day. And we removed that from them. Uh, so they feel like they were being forced to use the technology they didn't want to, they didn't know how to use. And beyond that, some customers, they were afraid of making mistakes because they didn't know anything about technology. Um, so emotions were various emotions from frustration, from fear, and then uh, some people were angry. So after that experience, so that was one of my first more memorable experiences in services of many experiences that I started to be more aware of the magnitude of emotions and how they affect customer relationship um, and the imp importance of understanding the customer's wants and needs. So we have positive experiences. Um, I'm not going to go much into that, but just for you to understand in a consumer journey, there are many moments, different mon moments that relate to different touch points, like a touch point could be how I navigate your website, another touch point, it could be how, um, how long I wait to get someone to pick up the phone, or it could be when I meet someone in person, if they smile to me, if they remember my name, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, some of these moments, especially the ones that involve consumer to employee interaction, they can be tailored to promote positive experiences. Some of these moments, they might be more important than other ones, um, um, but all of them, they should be positive experiences. So in here, we have in here in the, in the pink line, um, this is when we meet expectations. Consumers are happy when we meet expectations, but the fact that they are happy doesn't mean they're going to be loyal to you. They can be happy with many different pro service providers, right? So they switch to service providers when some others have better offerings. So um, when you exceed expectations, the consumers, they are delighted. Uh, and in our case of the ATM machines, that was exactly what we did not get from some of them. Some of them, they were frustrated. Some of them, they were angry, even saying that they would change uh, banks because of that situation. So why is this important? Uh, it's important that we identify those moments that matter from the literature of emotions uh, we know that peak experiences, when you have emotions, they are very strong, such as delight and anger, uh, they tend to be more memorable, memorable. So we must identify the different touch points and if we can redesign or design them to be more positive experiences. And also that the negative experiences, uh, they should be avoided at all costs and they must be uh, anticipated as well. Uh, because negative emotions tend to last longer and be more memorable, memorable than the positive ones. So I can make a customer delighted and angry. They will remember the moment they were angry, more likely to remember the angry moment, more likely than the positive one. And then, then uh, when we talk about the moments of matter, it is not as simple as that because the consumer is always changing. And what is valuable for them it reaches different dimensions as well. And that's why our topic of the changing consumer becomes important right now. What is value for the changing consumer in a conscious world, right? So we have in here that um, the consumers are changing, their needs and wants, they are changing as well. So how can we prepare? How can we understand our role as marketers or the role of marketing in your business uh, and be prepared to a more conscious marketplace. So we come from a premise in here that yes, those needs and wants, they are constantly changing. That's something that you cannot, you don't have control over. 
we just have to accept they are changing we just need to understand how they are changing so there is a considerable amount of research uh, about the changing consumer and the need for companies to be agile in adapting their offerings to the these changes uh, and how to communicate this offering this changed offering to their consumers as well uh, and also it's needless to say as you can see the numbers from your screen right here that um, consumers don't feel like they are getting what they want from brands or they are not getting what they want and uh, uh, as quick as, as they would like to so this creates um, a disconnect in between consumers and companies uh, that big gap and uh, it leads to brand switching so they are going to go to the other provider or to the other brand or the other company that actually gets them um, one of the things that uh, in our studies, uh, one of the things that the recent events and some of them not so recent, they are just, you know, uh, cooking up for some time, uh, they are contributing for this change is climate change. And we have sustainable goals being disseminated for a diverse range of industries, but not every single business understand those. It's um, it, one of the research that I have done with uh, RACQ, we found that people do understand climate change. They don't understand sustainability. How can we be sustainable? They don't understand that. Um, and um, that generates a problem for companies because they don't, if they don't understand, they don't act on it, obviously. Uh, we have the Me Too, we have a movement, and then we have the Black Lives Matter, we have the Ukraine war, and we have the floods and the drought in Australia. So if you look at all of these things that have been happening and they are being in the media and the news uh, recently, what do you think those events or those issues they have in common and you can use the chat i think the chat function might be available for everyone or oh, if not uh it's okay uh but what they have in common in here is that these events they are focused on broader issues oh say oh, Hamsha, thank you so much constantly changing so thank i didn't know that the empathy Hi, Carol, thank you. Empathy. So that's great. That's one of the points uh, that I wanted to share with. It is constantly changing. Uh, and um, they are issues that are not necessarily about you, but they're about others. Uh, and here, then, we start to navigate a world or a new environment um, where emotions, and more specifically, empathy, uh, becomes the key. And companies who are failing to invest uh, in demonstrating that they care, demonstrating this empathy, uh, they are the ones presenting the greatest levels of disconnection, uh, which leads to less satisfaction, obviously. And on the other hand, um, the companies who are successfully adding elements in their offering, showing that they care about others, um, and adding this empathy uh, and the genuine care for others uh, are more likely to have consumer preference and also loyalty. So in here, what we have is that um, we are changing or evolving from a point in time where we are the offerings is only about your consumer, your target market, what they want, what they need is about them. But we are evolving to a point in which we also have to care about others and these others they are not only other customers but they are friends they could be the community they could be the country it could be the planet uh, very strong around diversity inclusion equality sustainability and this is what we see uh, so this is basically what my research entails uh, it is um, it is a big name a very strong word saying morality uh, but it's basically doing the what's right, right? Um, so it's about respect, it's about being honest, it's about having ethics. Um, and I am a, a big believer that this is relevant to all of us. Uh, and I'm very passionate about this topic. So we are evolving here for some of you who are more into or understand customer relationship marketing. 
you will know that many of the rewards that we give to our most loyal customers, they are around uh, giving them status. So we give them preference, we give them priority, we give them everything that's special is about them and how they can enjoy those benefits. So we are coming from in here, which is around achievements and power in this orientation of our focus in here um, to a different point in this all of these goals in here in which we are we have to consider it's not that we are not going to give them some special benefits but how can we provide our consumers with something that's more universal and it can be seen as a more benevolent approach which is also aligned with this research and this movement around incorporating diversity, equality, and inclusion into business practices. Even if you don't have a customer relationship program established, but we all want to build relationships with our customers. So how can we do that? Um, so in here again, uh, this is a scale that's uh, much used in social psychology which is called moral identity centrality. So we ask people how much this, uh, they want to be seen as caring, compassionate, fair, friendly, generous, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and um, normally we see that this moral identity, it is activated because we have different identities, but it's activated when we see moral issues, when, when we see ads uh, promoting what the companies are doing. So we focus on that because we all have a part of, um, part of this moral identity in our beings. Some of us are a little bit more on the service than others, but we all have that. But why I'm saying that to you, why I'm bringing here scales of social psychology, it is because we understand that although those individuals, they want to be seen as good and caring and compassionate and generous, uh, and they want to do the right thing, they do not always have the meanings to do so. And that's why we as business companies, we come into place helping them to be what they, who they want to be. Like I'm showing you in my first picture, I want people to be seeing me in a positive light. So I'll have more friends because uh, I love having friends with companies the same. So how can we help them to be who they want to be? So consumption, and that's a concept that's not rocket science. We consume things that help to reinforce our self-identity. So after all of these different events in the world where we don't care about us much, but we also care about the others, we want, we are deeply concerned about the outcomes of others and the well-being of others, we are going to give preference to brands that help us to express who we are and how much we also care. So some people, they will pay an extra to consume fair trade. Or, and some consumers will actually make sure that the, 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 the clothes that they use and the bags that they go to the supermarket with, they also help to, they make highly recognizable who they, what they stand for, such as in here, uh, rolling with the team green. So I am a socially responsible, I am a green consumer. And it does nothing wrong with that. I look good because I do that. So this is the, a cause that's important to me. So we help them to be who they want to be if we are able to incorporate those values in our offering. And then we go back to our, my Kmart and Louis Vuitton example, which is although values in general, what we offer to our consumers, a handbag from Kmart and another handbag from Louis Vuitton, they will have different meanings. The moral values they don't have, there is no gray line in there. They are relevant to everyone. So if you go to their websites uh, at Kmart, they have in there all of everything that they are doing around diversity and inclusion and around uh, waste management, energy, and et cetera, et cetera. And if you go to Louis Vuitton website, they also demonstrate their commitment with sustainability and their social responsibility programs. Funny enough, the Kmart one's a little bit more elaborated than, than Louis Vuitton, but that's also a point for a different discussion. Um, so in here, I presented to you value and uh, how emotions can play a big role if how we as business, 
we can bring together some of this doing what's right to generate positive experiences. Uh, and this is all very much a theory, right? So how can we actually do that? So I was hoping that at the end of this um, uh, speech, I could give you some ideas on how can we do that? Because I imagine that not everyone has budgets to do everything, right? Uh, but um, the idea it is, if we do that, if we are promoting and doing the right thing that's not only concentrated in our service or product, but more about others in society, we are gonna be able to connect better with our consumers and deliver them some of these wants and needs, helping them to be who they want to be, right? So I would say um, that, um, uh, and this is um, really important, which is first, we have to educate ourselves, right? So I don't have in here an extensive list of websites because I'm not going to tell you what to do as well. Uh, but these are suggestions. So this is uh, if you there's the QR code for those specific places. So there's why um, diversity, quality, or equity and inclusion matters. So this is the McKinsey report and explains uh, some of the outcomes and why it matters if you're not convinced. Um, this is a uh, Ellie MacArthur is a foundation that specializes in understanding circular economy. It's always more about sustainability. And I really love their polls. So I, I follow them on LinkedIn. I think it's been quite valuable for me uh, for understanding better and questioning myself, challenging myself as well. So that will be, I think, the first step is educating yourself. Uh, there are many others. Uh, I didn't bring them over here. I'm sure if you Google, you're going to find it. Uh, the other one is leading by example. I don't think we have time to read the whole thing, but when you have access to the slides, you can read more carefully. But this example here comes from David Overing, which is someone else that I also follow on LinkedIn, and I love his examples. And he was saying that he was on a flight, a large flight in the US, and someone was sick and vomited in the hall, um, in the corridor. And then someone came with a hospital gown, gloves, and etc., and cleaning supplies, and kneeled down to clean the mess. And then he said, the junior member has to do the dirty work, right? And he said to the person cleaning, and then he said, uh, no, um, I am the person. I am the team lead on this flight. And he was just surprised that um, the team leader on a very large international fly with a large crew was the one cleaning up the vomit. So I think this is a, just a great example of leadership. And it's likely that you have that kind of leadership, you're gonna have the turnover of employees is gonna be much less, but this is also about doing the right thing and leading by example. So I think this is a very strong message for me. Another one is uh, I've been working in different companies in the last years, uh, and then flexible work arrangements, they tend to have a very positive outcome in terms of satisfaction. And if you have a business where your employees, they are the ones, the frontline employees dealing with your customers, having satisfied employees tends to leave a greater customer satisfaction. This is also not new, um, but um, it has many different um, uh, deeper meanings. Uh, it, it, besides them being happier with their jobs, they feel like they have an opportunity or an equal opportunity. They feel like they have a voice. They feel like they are being cared of. So this whole idea of um, doing what's right by your customers, it starts by doing what's right with your employees as well and your partners, whoever else you are deal, do, doing business with. Uh, it is very important in a business to uh, take care of who you're working together with. And then the other one is engage with your local community. Uh, consumers, they place more importance on supporting local businesses, uh, but that's a two-way road. So you, you can take advantage of consumers wanting to buy from you, especially in the area where your business is located. Uh, but what are you doing for your community? So. Uh, uh, one of the other things that that follow this the previous slide it is how can you connect to your community, they might not be your consumers, but they might be your future consumers and they might help to strengthen your relationship with the community. 
and it's very rewarding again as i mentioned volunteering is uh is it, it, it has um a deeper meaning for me um but as an as a, a suggestion you can do this as a company bonding activity you can get your your team and do something together if you have the time you can find a fundraiser for example that's uh the, that the cause is relevant to either your team or a team member or maybe the business next door uh so you can do something together as well and um and um often local you can do you can help any charity but often local is better so uh, the when you promote they becomes a little bit more genuine that you care about your community uh, if you cannot donate your money uh, you can donate your time uh, you can maybe talk about your professional in a local public school you can volunteer at their canteen or you can participate in school events the parents are likely to be some of your customers for example uh, if you can donate your money, uh, and just be mindful that sometimes it's very small amounts. You can sponsor um, a local school activity or even a shelter activity. Uh, you can do, for example, ice blocks for a sports day. Um, so in here there are some examples. You can create your, your own event on the Mother Foundation. That's the biggest morning tea you can host as well with your friends or your team. And it's very nice for building. Uh, connection with your team members and here again um, one more idea in here is that oops, commit to a sustainable I was having some trouble passing my slides so commit to a sustainable cause I'm going to show you here um, so can you go paperless uh, very recently I was in a uh, conference and instead of giving us those big booklets with everything that's going on or the brochures uh, uh, they developed an app so the app not only has you can pick up the sessions that you like to attend but they give you the reminders it can help you to connect with people in there so going paper so of course that was maybe a little bit of a, an extreme example but if, can you go paperless can you try to disseminate the culture of let's print less of whatever if we don't have to uh, let's try to use the internet or the convenience of technology for good um, and um, many of the Australian states territories they are now uh, banning plastics but the business are not so you go to a business and you still see many single-use plastics in there in the cupboards can you do that as well follow the trend and promote that within your team members and your customers um, instead of putting them all in a bin donate them to a school or to an art school they can find different uses if you have many single plastic uh, left over donate them instead of putting them in a bin and in here at UQ what we are doing that's really interesting is that we have these desktop bins like the ones I'm showing you in here and this is real this is the this is a picture that down the, the corridor I have those big uh, bins uh, with the actual um, you can um, do the waste sorting and waste management uh, by yourself so we I put in here every at the end of every day I go in there and I separate my rubbish accordingly so it helps it makes it easier for waste management and recycling so you're doing your part as a business every single team member is doing their part so everyone is being educated and committing with the cause but the thing is that sometimes people are too eager to do everything they embrace everything nothing is done right so i would i would say go one thing at a time it's really important if you can measure uh before and after for example can you measure how many uh how much the printer was used in a specific amount of time and how much has it been reduced for the single use plastics you can do the same thing and for the waste management you can just check how many of the bags you have each week but i can guarantee that the waste management will be done more properly if you do it that way and if there's not much investment made into do those things so another thing um, communicate in a positive manner everything that you're doing it can have a more 
different ways to communicate, right? So consumers, they prefer these uplifting and positive messages. Uh, and that's more evident uh, within Generation X and parents. They feel 73% of them, they actually prefer that. Uh, similarly to the negative experiences that I mentioned before, um, um, negative uh, uh, emotions, they are less affecting promoting behaviors such as preference and loyalty. Um, not all communication that you have about your brand has to be about your product or your service. And that's when these different activities in here uh, 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 going on um, efforts on doing the right thing can be part of your content strategy. So plan your content strategy per month. So maybe for the whole year, what are you going to be posting? That's not only about your product. It's actually very frustrating when you go to a website and there's nothing else. You don't know the brand story. You don't know who are the people who work in there. What, why they have started their, their business. Um, what's the business story? What's the, the team story? You don't know the team. Uh, and it's very important these days, we want to connect. We also want to be open for that connection. And that means team pictures, story of the business, et cetera. Uh, so I'll, that's one of my advice to you. Another thing that's really important, and even my students, they have been noticing that, is that most of the times, the website, the ads that you use, all the communication strategy, there's no diversity. And uh, maybe I'm not saying here, fire your employees. I'm not saying they hire more diverse, uh, uh, a more multicultural background. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's something to be considered as well about story diversity and inclusion. Is your website prepared to attend for different needs of vulnerable consumers, for example? Uh, so this is something you have to consider. And when you do everything, when you were able to do maybe some of those things, you promote what you're doing. You can decorate your store with the stories and the activities. You can post on your preferred social media um, uh, platforms. And you can also inspire your consumers to join on board of, you, of your activities to do something together. So I'm here at the end of my presentation and um, my research interests, as you can see from here, morality, emotions, services and sustainability. Uh, if you don't feel like talking about this today, we can connect and I would love to hear from you uh, if you want to discuss any of these topics further. I will get back with uh, Maggie now. Oh, maybe I can just go back in here with my uh, Maggie, my um, my uh, contact. Yes. If anyone wants to connect, I give preference to email and LinkedIn. Uh, so this is my LinkedIn and emails if you want to connect. And we can, Maggie will help me to facilitate the questions now if we have any. Yeah, great. We'll also share your contact details in the follow-up email as well to anyone who's registered or if you're watching this afterwards, you would have received that email as well. So um, so you can connect with, uh, with Vivian. All right. So um, while we're waiting for some questions to come through, um, Hamsha made a good point and it was one of the questions that I had as well about, you know, we had a workshop on neurodiversity and I thought it was fantastic. And my question to you was, you know, um, are there any workshops or courses um, that you know of or even just subject topics that you think would be most valuable for employers to put their employees through or for, even for business owners or, you know, le leaders of the team to go through themselves? Um, I think it, I think one of the, I'm not sure um, if I get your question correctly, but I would say that um, Normally when we have a business, we are very much goal driven, like sales driven, and uh, this is everything that matters. And we sometimes showing emotions or vulnerability, it can be a sign of weakness. I would try maybe to disseminate that this is not the case these days. People want to deal with people and they want to deal with individuals. So maybe understanding the impact of having this connection and showing empathy can actually drive sales because people feel that connection. And I'm not sure if I answer your question. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you make a really good point too, that, you know, sometimes um, a lot of the like education and growth opportunities, you know, which are still great are based around, you know, um, 
you know, sales strategies and, you know, marketing strategies and that kind of thing. But I think it's so vital as well to, you know, to Hamsha's point, like, you know, doing workshops on neurodiversity, um, mental health topics, sustainability, like, you know, working together as a business to what you can do, um, you know, to to do better work moving forward, even in even diversity and inclusion workshops, you know. So, yeah, I think that's it's great. Yeah. And, and what what happens sometimes as we have a UQ, although it's a big organization, is that we have one person that knows more than everyone else, and they disseminate their uh, their learning. So you can have one person uh, for diversity, another person maybe for equality or different topic or sustainability, and they can come up if they are interested. You're not going to force your people to do those things, but if they have any interest. Uh, they can dedicate some of their time to learn that and uh, extract what's more important and that can be applicable to the business. So that one, maybe one strategy, instead of having everyone doing courses, you can have one people or team doing stuff together. And I'm saying that because I don't know the sizes of the companies we are talking, so I'm trying to cater for just small businesses, but the bigger businesses, they can have teams learning different things and being in charge of applying those learning outcomes to the business. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we've got a question from Adriana who's asked, um, she said, hi, uh, what will be the main tactics to change brand perception? At the moment, we're doing some communications to remind the people of who we are, but how do we gain back their interest and turn around sales? Well, um, who you are is really important, but how what you are resonates with your consumers. This is the first thing I would say, because we can be many things. None of them can be relevant to your consumers. And maybe that's what is the gap. And in coming from point A, where they know for points to action, right? So what's what's actually relevant? So then we go back, when we look at the model, we go back to the research. Sometimes it helps to sit back with a, a good sample of your consumers, sit down with them and say, how do you see us? Because uh, um, look, this is a, a complex or maybe a bit of a, a tricky uh, thing to explain, but most of the time, how you see yourself, I'm hoping that's not the case, but sometimes how do you see yourself is not how your consumers see you. So you can say what you are, what you stand for, they don't see that. So maybe in there, there is a gap in communication in what the perception from the consumer is not exactly what the brand is doing. So I will go back to that to see what are you preaching? It is actually visible and tangible to your consumers or is just a speech that they don't actually, they, they cannot um, actually um, see that in what you're doing. That's when, again, doing the right thing becomes important. It's not only about your product being great. What else? Because we have many great products and services in the market. Yeah, great. I will do that. Uh, but uh, if you want to further discuss this, I'm happy for a chat. Yeah, that's great. Great answer. And yeah, it's it's hearing from the consumer themselves is always the most invaluable feedback and um, will always be so helpful. And um, and and Adriana just said, amazing. Thank you. So thank you for that. Um, Ham just asked a question. Uh, we are now focusing on diversity and inclusion, uh, waste management, sustainability and what's next in the pipeline that businesses may struggle to meet consumer demand. Oh, that's great that you're doing all of that. That's amazing. Uh, I think what's next is uh, communicating that. I would do that. Like, uh, what's next in the pipeline that business may struggle to meet? Um, look, I think there's so much uh, to do. I think one of the most um, uh, knowing a little bit of um, circular economy, uh, it is we all know that waste management is important. 96% of Australians say this is important. 16% of them actually do it or they do it all the time. So I think uh, make sure that your practices are correct. Uh, uh, make sure that you can measure the impact of your practices in sustainability or waste management, et cetera. See if you can check the results. The results most likely are gonna show up in your bills. If you're doing everything right, you're gonna have energy reduction and everything else. And you can show that to your consumers how about you, if you're having any savings, how about you pass that on to your consumers as well? We are reducing blah, blah, blah. I know that's very tricky to do it now with after COVID and everything, people are increasing prices instead of decreasing prices. But um, yeah, I would do communicating that one. And I think one of the most um, um, sensitive topics, it is how 
you are ready for consumer um, um, with disabilities. So websites, they don't have voiceover, you cannot navigate if you don't have help. So, and I think I'm not sure exactly in terms of technology, that's not my area, but how can you cater for people with disabilities will be something that becomes really important. So that's about inclusion, right? Yeah, yeah. The work continues and it doesn't stop. The work keeps going. Yeah. Uh, on that point as well, and I think my last question for you would be, you know, on your point earlier about connection uh, with your consumers and sharing the information about what your business is doing, um, you know, and all the good things that you're doing, uh, how much do you share with your consumers and, you know, it, like what, where, do, where does it get to where it's maybe overkill versus, you know, not sharing enough, if that makes sense? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I constantly think that, that some brands, they share too much yeah uh, and we don't uh, we, we don't want to hear from our banks every day for example yes yes <laughs> so um uh, i would say to be uh check what the competition is doing that could be one of the things um and it is a good balancing between promoting your product and promoting whatever else that you do i think whatever you do a story is really important it's not like we participated in the marathon why you participate in a marathon, how the idea comes to play. So you don't need to, when we have content strategy, your post normally has to be very small, but it can have a link to the story and people can connect better when they understand the story, especially the people involved, which can be your community, you could be uh, whatever charity is involved. So they can actually help you to promote whatever good you're doing as well. So not only yourself promoting, but, um, uh the companies or brands or partners that you have together with you yeah beautifully put beautifully put well, i think that's all we've got time for today um caroline just said thank you dr vivian i really enjoyed your presentation you made a lot of sense um so i think everyone you know can agree that that was just such an amazing session and i uh, was so grateful for your time today and um yeah and if we've got your details up on there as well so please everyone connect with vivian if you've got any questions or want to chat any further and um and once again thank you so much to our partners today at uh, the university of queensland business school for making today happen uh it's been amazing carol says thank you thanks carol for being online thank thanks madeline thank you guys so much for coming and meeting me i wish i had more time to chat with everyone but um, please connect and we can maybe have a Zoom call or anything if you need. I'm very, very interested in, in understanding the industry better, if that makes sense as well. Absolutely. And thank you, Maggie, for helping and inviting oh, me. Thank you. Thanks, Vivian. It's been a pleasure having you on. And uh, we'll send the Guys. recording out from this session to everyone afterwards. So keep an eye on your emails and enjoy your afternoon or night, wherever you are and whenever you're watching this. All right. Bye. bye for now.